Hi, welcome back. Glad to see you today. Thought today we'd do a little seascape. So I tell you what, let's start out and bring all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you this crazy thing I've got up here today. Today I have my standard old canvas, but I've taken a piece of contact paper and I've cut a design out. In fact, the design, if everything works just right, will sort of look like a seashell. On the top, I've painted the little more than half. I've painted it with gray gesso. On the bottom, black gesso. And then we've taken and covered the entire thing with a very thin coat of liquid clear. Just enough to cover it. You don't need much. On the bottom down here, I've taken a little bit of thalo blue and thalo green and put it, just, just put a little color right on there and right at the very bottom, a little bit of Van Dyke brown. That's all. And I've got a piece of little masking tape right here to keep the horizon straight. Believe it or not, it's a lot simpler than it sounds. Let's start with a little Indian yellow today. And let's just go right in here and drop in a little bit of color using the old two inch brush. Just like so. I like using this gray and black gesso. It makes some gorgeous effects. Just absolutely gorgeous. Take a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow ochre and mix them together and come right above that. Little touch of the titanium white in it though. That'll make it shine, sparkle. Mm. All right. Okay, now then, I want it to be very bright right there at the horizon. Once again, this little piece of masking tape here is just to keep the horizon straight. Okay, without cleaning the brush, I'm gonna go right into a small amount, a very small amount of the red, bright red. Bright red, maybe a little touch of the titanium white in it again. Since we have no color on the top, you sometimes need to put a little bit of white paint with it. There we go. Isn't that pretty already? I like these colors. And you can do this to any degree of brightness that you want. All right. Now, maybe a little lizard crimson. I'm gonna add a little white to that too. Lizard crimson, titanium white. And let's just put a little of that in there. I want it to get progressively darker as we move away from the horizon. Okay. As I say, these colors are pretty just like that. Just like that. And right up here at the very tippy top, let's have, I tell you what, let's use phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue, it's very pretty. And we'll just put a little touch of that in there. There. A little bit of titanium white with it also. Okay, maybe a little more white. If you want to stand out a little brighter, add a little more of the white. Okay. See there, that's all there is to it. Now then, let me wash the old brush. I'm just looking for an excuse to wash the brush. Shake off the paint thinner. <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. If you're gonna do that, uh, be careful. <laughs> you can change the decor of a room in a heartbeat. There. Something about like so. Now then, that gives us a pretty nice little sky. It's very, very colorful, very effective. It's not bad at all. Just beat the excess paint out there. Let's take, let's take a little phthalo blue, a lizard crimson, proportionately much more crimson than blue. I want this to be sort of to the reddish side of lavender. Okay, there we are. Now, let me clean the old brush, knife, whatever we got. Let's find a, we'll use number three fan brush, it doesn't matter. That's what I picked up, so that's what we'll use. Load a little color on it. Don't need a whole bunch, just a little color on it. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world here, there are some happy little clouds that just float around and have a good time all day. They just sort of float around. Just decide where they live in your world and drop them in. Drop them in. Wherever, 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 it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There, just sort of stir them up on there. I'm gonna come back with a little blender brush and softly blend them together. There, we'll just use this little 
we'll just blend it with this little two inch brush. See? Very gently. Very, very gently. That easy. So just using just the top corner of the brush, making little tiny circles. Tiny little circles. There you go. Just like that. So, okay, now then. Over in here, we'll just blend it. Blend it, blend it, blend it. And then maybe in our room, maybe. Yeah, why not? Maybe there's several little clouds. We can have as many clouds as we want. In your world, you decide how many you want. Drop them in. Now use this lavender color, because if you used blue and went into this yellow, guess what you'd have? <laughs> you know, don't you? You'd have bright green. And we don't want that today up here in the sky. Sometimes maybe a little green in the sky is okay, but not today, not today, not today. Shoot, now I got that going. Maybe over here there's just a little stringy cloud. See, just put in a basic shape. That's all you need. That's all. It doesn't matter. Clouds are very easy. There. I'm beating that brush just to take off excess paint. I used it before to blend, so it collected a little paint. But when you're doing clouds like this, do them in layers. Do the one that you think's the farthest away first, and then put the next layer a little closer to you. Put it on top. That way it has the feeling of depth and distance. All right. Now this is just a very, very simple way of making some little clouds in the seascape. Very easy, even if you've never painted a seascape before. This one I believe you can do without any problem. All right, this little cloud here, just blend over it. See, it'll just softly go right into the painting. That easy. Take a brush here, we can take a little white paint, and you can blend this out and make it look like there's light shining through the, there's a million things you can do. When you, when you start this practice, have fun. Don't just try to do exactly what we do here on TV. Do your own thing. Do your own thing, that's what the young people say. And it's true in painting. Just get in there and do it. There, I like to work with young people because they don't know any of the fears that we know when we get a little older. Shoot, they just get in there and, and do it. I'm gonna take this little piece of tape off now. Just slip it right off. There we are. Now see our horizon line is perfectly straight, or as straight as the tape was. And it just makes life a little easier. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take a little white, a little bit of that same old cloud color I was using. Maybe far back in the distance in our world here, maybe there's a little headland that lives out in here. It comes wee out wherever you want it to go. There, see? That's all there is to it though. Far away. We don't want a lot of detail. It's too far away. Much, much too far away. Give it a little pull just to blend the color together because that canvas is wet. Paint will move on it that easy. See, already it looks like a little piece of land that is far, far in the distance. Okay, let's wash the old brush. Fan brush isn't near as much fun to wash as, as the two inch brush is. Now then, we have to start making some, some big decisions. For me, the easiest way to paint a seascape is to first determine where your major wave's gonna be, or the big old crasher wave. In our world, I think it's gonna be, maybe right there, crash over, come back this way. Helps to make little, little sounds like here at the ocean. Now, if this doesn't make any sense, think about it, right here it's gonna crash over, okay? Does that make sense now? I hope so. And maybe back in here, a little thing like that. That's really about all we need. That's really about all we need. Okay, let me wipe the brush off. I'm just wiping all the excess paint off. Now then, we wanna start creating the shape of these waves. And what's important here is the dark area. Save the dark area. That's what we're looking for. See there? Can you see what's happening? 
I know at first it didn't make sense when somebody says save the dark area, but the dark is what, what will form the basic shape. The light, no big deal. See, same thing back here. Already you're beginning to see the little trough between the waves. See that dark area right there? It's most important, most, most important. And then we can start putting in just little indications of things that are far away. But we have that phthalo blue and phthalo green color that's underneath on the dark black canvas. And these things just work. Look at that color. If people don't see you put this color on, do a demonstration for your family or friends. And don't let them see you put the color on. It'll drive them crazy. They'll think magic's happening there when they see all these colors that just explode. Because the canvas will still look black. All right. Now then, let's start deciding. I'm going to take a little yellow, cad yellow, a little white. Right in here, right in here will be the eye. So we put that yellow in there. We can just use a fan brush. It doesn't matter. Filbert brush works very nice for this too. Okay. We better wash that brush. It's a little dirty. Because we want this brush to be very clean so we can blend the eye of that wave. The pretty part. Okay, now we take just the corner of the brush. Just the corner. And just very gently, very gently, using just the corner, just begin to turn it a little bit, just to wiggle it. And it'll blend that out as smooth as silk. Just like that. Now, I changed corner, so we still have a clean corner up here. I want to go back and blend it a little more. Don't take a dirty corner back in there. All right, see there? But isn't that neat? Already you can see the light zinging right through there. And it's very simple. Very simple. Seascapes, seascapes can give you a hard time when you first start them. I try to make them as simple as possible. Titanium white on the fan brush. Titanium white. This is the fun part. That's where the old wave just crashes over and has fun. Now, take some of that lavender color. I still got the same brush, a little white on it. Doesn't matter. And some of that lavender color that we that we made for the sky and the little headland in the background. And let's begin putting in the shadow here. This is just the shadow for the crasher. There it comes. Maybe it splashes clean up like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll put some stones in there. What the heck? So it has something to crash on. I like to put little stones in seascapes. There. Just let that crash right on back. See? Just let your imagination go. Sort of try to think like a wave. Think that you're down at the ocean today and you're having a good time. And, and this is what it looks like to you. Let's wash the old fan brush here. I'm still using the number three fan brush, but you could do it with a number six. You might find you might find the number three is just a little easier. A little easier. I'm gonna take titanium white. Still using that number three fan brush. Add a little light touch of yellow into it. Cat yellow, but light, light touch, not much. Now then, let's go up in here. Now we can come in here and begin putting in some highlights on this foam. Just highlight it. There we go. Don't want to kill all that nice shadow color that we worked so hard to put in there. Just think about the old wave crashing over there. There it comes. See there? Let it, let it just churn and carry on. These things get violent. If you're a surfer, you sure know what I'm talking about. Boy, they get violent sometimes. Good, clean, dry, two-inch brush. Barely, barely touching. Just barely touching with a corner. Blend it, blend it, blend it. You could do this with a little soft blending brush, too. Work just as well. Probably better, now that I think about it. But isn't that neat? See the old wave coming over there, crashing and banging and carrying on? All right, maybe 
Let's take some Midnight Black. Midnight Black, Van Dyke. We just mix them together here. I've got another fan burst, number six now. And maybe in our world. Yep, there's a big old stone. Right in there. Right in there. Big old stone. And maybe there's another stone there where all this is crashing and churning it. Coming in right. Like that. Like that. Like that. See? Now sometimes you can take a liner brush. We we'll use some bright red. It doesn't matter. Paint thinner on it. And you can go in here and just very carefully begin to shape your rocks. You can just shape them. There, see? Just enough to give them a little high. I want them to stay very dark. Very, very dark. Very dark. But that's a neat way of just putting in all kinds of little details. Here comes another one. Right there. Get a little more paint thinner. There, see? But that's one of the easiest ways I've ever seen of forming the basic shape of little rocks. Because you don't, you don't have to do much. And I'm a lazy, lazy painter. Now then you take a little, little uh, white with a little touch of phthalo blue in it. And do the same thing if you want to show like water's running off those rocks. Thin the paint. Very, very thin. And then you can have this just churning and carrying on here any way that you want it. Go back to our little fan brush. Have it sort of climbing up in here and there. Covering up the edges. Boy, there's a lot going on in there. But isn't that neat? And you can do it. Okay. Now maybe we put a little Van Dyke brown right in here. Let's take, let's take a little yellow ochre, a little titanium white. We'll just put it on the old brush there. Maybe a little cat yellow in there too. That'll bright. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, let's decide maybe the water's coming right down here and there's some reflections in the, in the wet sand. So pull it straight down and then go across. That's all we got to do. And that'll give the impression of wet water or wet sand. Wet sand is what I meant to say. Take a little titanium white, a little phthalo blue, mix them together, and wipe off the knife. Now we'll get a little roll of paint, just like we normally put on the big knife. And with that, I'm going to start using a lot of pressure and really bend the knife. Bend it. All right, this is where we decide where the water line is, where it's coming up on the bank. There. And maybe it's coming down through here. However you want it, however. Take our little fan brush once again, grab that, and begin pulling it. See there? Isn't that gorgeous? It works easy, works so easy. And you begin to have foam patterns and stuff that are coming down through here. Like that there. All kinds of little doers. A little filbert brush works great for that too. See, you can just take it and go around, make all those little watery things that happen. Let's use our script liner brush. With that, put a little bit of the blue and white on here, and let's begin putting the indication of all kinds of little things that are happening in here. There they come. Now, when you have a lot of time, you can put tremendous amounts of detail in this. Tremendous. There. Paint thinner. I'm going to go into that dark lavender color. And I need a little dark line that lives right under here to pull this up. A little dark line. See it? There it comes. All right. And you also need it right in here. It separates. Separates it. 
makes it just jump right out at you. Maybe you can see a few little duders in through there. That helps create that curve that you want so badly in that wave. There we are. Okay. And you can take oh, a little blue and white and make the indication that maybe there's some little watery things that are happening all out through here. See there? Just to make it look like water. That easy. Okay, a little bit of titanium white paint thinner. Touch of blue into that right here, but it's mainly white. And then you can begin putting in some details back in here. Just to all kinds of little things. Just to give it to a wave action type feel. And you can put all kinds of little doers in between here. Once again, when you have when you have time to put all these things in, just take your time and do it. Something like so. You know, I've gotten so many letters from people all over the country. In one of the earlier shows, I, I showed a cartoon version of my little squirrel pea pod. Well, people have asked to see that again. So I'm going to put him up for just a second and let you check out old people. Isn't that cute? You know, and I got another surprise for you. My cartoonist, he got a little crazy. Guess what he made a cartoon of now? Shoot, hey, old Bob -a loop So I guess you'll be seeing Bob in cartoon form pretty soon. But isn't that cute? I think so. My little painter man suit. It's just like the little opening that Jerry makes for us. He's cute, though. Little, little painter guy. All right. I got a minute left here. I want to, yeah, check out your bravery. Okay. Maybe we'll have us a little palm tree in here. Maybe we'll have a big palm tree. All right. Give him a friend. There we go. Just a little palm tree. I'm gonna grab another fan brush. I have several going. We'll take, let's use a little, <laughs> doesn't matter, use a little, a little light color here. Just tap along the edges and give it a little pull. Make it look like a palm tree lives right there. A little bit on this one. There, just to give it a, just to give it the impression of a little tree. Now then, I want to take the brush that has the black paint in it. it has, this is midnight black, and I've put paint thinner with it to thin it. Just to thin it. Now then, here we go. Here we are. Just take, and let's just pull in a few little leaves on this old rascal. I'm from Florida, so we have a lot of palm trees around there. There we are. Okay, someone asking what part of Florida I live in. I live right in Orlando, right close to Mickey Mouse's house. There we are. But very soon when we start our show in Missouri, I'll be moving there. So I hope to see you in either place. All right. There, see? That's a very, very nice, easy way to make a palm tree that looks pretty good. Pretty good. All right. A few little, little limbs on him. And you decide how many limbs are on your palm tree and if where they're situated, how they're blowing. And the wind's usually blowing around the old ocean here. There we are. And you can come back with your liner brush and put a lot of greens and stuff in there if you want to. Okay, I tell you what, let's pull the contact paper off and see what we got here. And as I mentioned earlier, I tried to cut this into something that looks sort of like a seashell. <laughs> and it's a little different. I have done some that I've taken like a, the pattern of a fish. Fish swims in the ocean, so I don't see anything wrong with having the ocean in the fish. Any pattern that you want works very well. Try it. If you have time, take a photo, send it to me. Let me see what you're doing. We're gonna call that little painting finished. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.